Hello, welcome to this lesson in Mastering Statistics. We're going to continue working with hypothesis testing. In this particular case, we're going to start to talk about the concept of a p-value. So keep in mind that this, right for now, is in the context of our large sample hypothesis testing of means. So we're doing hypothesis testing with means. We're doing large samples for right now. And uh, so we have sample sizes greater than 30. Now, up until now, we've been doing everything in terms of rejection regions. All right, and that's basically where the uh, level of significance, alpha, whether it's left tail, right tail, or two tail, you have to set it all up. But essentially, you create these boundaries. And these are rigid boundaries that you can then look at, calculate your test statistic from your data, see where it falls, and depending on where it falls, you can tell if you have rejected the null hypothesis or if you fail to reject it. All right, well, every once in a while when I do teaching, I get around to a topic that I get really excited about because p-values in this case is something that gives a lot of students a lot of heartburn, a lot of uh, you know scratching your head and trying to figure out what it really means. Well, I'm excited because I can explain this to you, I think, with some concrete examples and especially after we get through this, we do a couple more examples. Hopefully, I believe that you will have a very, very good understanding of what p-values are um, intuitively. Number one thing before we do any kind of um, you know, diving into this is I want you to keep in the back of your mind that the purpose of a p-value, really the, the process and, and sort of the, the reason that we do it is really no different than what we've been doing before. Essentially we want to figure out when we can reject that null hypothesis and when we fail to reject it. So uh, before we, we were using the rejection regions and figuring out where it falls, here we're doing something very similar. At first it's going to look totally different, but then when I start talking about it enough you'll realize it's exactly the same thing. So keep that in the back of your mind. We're using it for the same purpose. So let me just go down my list and make sure I say everything. Rejection regions work perfectly fine in statistics. There's nothing wrong with rejection regions. But p-values are more common to real research. So if you read a real research paper in statistics, they do a big study, they figure out what the hypothesis is and reject an all hypothesis, you're going to see p-values running around their, their explanation. So it's much, much more common. I'll explain why it's more common in real research. Uh, and so that's why we learned it here. And I've already said this once, I'll repeat it again. P-values are just another trigger to decide when we should reject that null hypothesis and when we should fail to reject it. First, I need to write down a, a book definition of what you're going to see in a book, what a p-value is. So let me get that down for you. But just keep in mind, don't worry too much about the definition uh, as we write it down. I mean, I'll kind of explain it, but as we go through it, you'll get a, a much more intuitive understanding of what a p-value is that will be much more concrete than what I'm going to write down here. The following is what you'll typically see in a book. It'll say p-value, and a book will typically define it as follows. And this is a good definition. There's, 